Welcome to our exploration of constellations in the spring sky. So I'm assuming that you have already loaded Stellarium onto your computer, and from either doing the summer or the winter skies in a previous lab, that you remain somewhat familiar with how to use Stellarium, how to enter it, how to see various constellations. So let us begin by starting Stellarium and setting up for the spring sky. So here's my default startup. Uh, notice that I already have the ocean background. If you don't, you will want to change to that. And I am located in Dallas. If you don't have Dallas as your default location, you may want to change that. Now first thing we need to do is pause the simulation. And then we change the time and date. We want to set the day to May 1st. The year doesn't matter, but it's 2014 now, so we'll keep it there. And the time we want to set to 22.30, that's 10.30 p.m. This gets us to central daylight time, so it'll be nice and dark. And there we go. Next, we want to go to the Sky Options window, turn off any planets, and change the light pollution to a 2. And if you want, you can turn off Twinkle or other things. That doesn't matter that much. Now that we've set the date and time, and we've set our location, and we've uh, turned off the planets and set the atmosphere. Let's zoom out so that our field of view is fairly large. We went around 125 to 135 degrees. Oh, too far. There we go. And we will tilt upward so that the S of south is nearly at the bottom of our screen. Now if you look up at the top here, you should see Ursa Major, see the Big Dipper. Ursa Major is going to be our signpost to the spring constellations. And that's because we can use Ursa Major to find three of our five constellations that we're going to learn. Here in the spring you don't see the Milky Way. That's because the Milky Way is very low in the sky. It's actually hugging the western horizon. You can see some of the winter stars over on the far right, Betelgeuse, Sirius, Procyon. The Milky Way goes right there along the horizon, which is why we don't see it. So to use Ursa Major to find our constellations, we will first begin with the handle of the Dipper, these three stars. And you notice that they make a bit of an arc. And so here's our mnemonic for how to find two bright stars, Arcturus and Spica, out in the real night sky. You follow the arc to Arcturus, keep on going and you will spy Spica. So again, you start with the arc of the dipper handle, you follow the arc to Arcturus, keep following that arc and you will spy Spica. So Arcturus is the brightest star in the constellation Bootes. The two dots you see over the second O in this case just mean to pronounce both letters with a long O. Bootes. It's not booties. It's not boaties. It's Bootes. I'll begin by putting up the artwork. Bootes, here with Arcturus, is a hunter in the spring sky, just like Orion was our hunter in the winter sky. And Bootes, although it has fainter stars, it still has the same basic shape as Orion. Uh, Bootes has two shoulders, a head, a belt, and two feet. Now the star Arcturus uh, used to mark uh, Bootes's groin but it has actually moved since the ancient Greeks came up with this constellation, so it's a bit out of place, and it makes the constellation look a little funnier. 
And you can see next to Boates, he has two hunting dogs. They're a separate constellation. Let me connect the dots now and get rid of the artwork. And you see that the way we connect the dots here with Boates, it almost looks like a bit of an ice cream cone um, with two little funny feet sticking out. So uh, not a highly recognizable constellation, but the star Arcturus is the third brightest star visible in the northern hemisphere. So uh, it dominates the sky here in the spring. Our next constellation is the constellation Virgo. And you may recognize Virgo as being a sign of the zodiac. Virgo roughly translated means the virgin. Looking at our artwork here, we can see that she's standing sideways. So Virgo represents the Greek goddess Demeter, or the Roman goddess Ceres, who is the goddess of the harvest. If you are aware of the tale of Orpheus in the Underworld, where uh, Demeter has a daughter Persephone who eats pomegranate seeds and therefore must go to live in Hades, Hades marries Persephone, uh, Orpheus wants to rescue Persephone from Hades and does so. Uh, so that entire story is based around Demeter. And since she's the goddess of the harvest, you can see her holding a shaft of wheat and an ear of corn. The star Spica represents the ear of corn. Now the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans didn't know about what we call corn, corn on the cob. Uh, this is more like the head of a shaft of wheat. So that is the constellation Virgo. If we connect the dots, it, again, it's a fairly large but nondescript constellation. You can see what looks sort of like a body with a couple of arms and a couple of legs coming out, uh, but it doesn't really look like a person. Boates and Virgo we found by following the arc of the handle. Arc to Arcturus, keep going to Spy Spica. Now we will return to Ursa Major and we will use these two stars of the inside bowl of the dipper. Remember the outside two will point to Polaris, which would be up off the top of our screen. We will use these two, follow a line downward, and we get to this bright star here. This bright star is called Regulus, and if you look above it, you see what looks like a coat hanger, or perhaps a scythe, or a backwards question mark. This is the head of Leo the lion. So again, we'll put up our artwork. There's our lion there. And just by connecting the dots, you can see uh, what looks sort of like a lion in profile. The question mark or the scythe or the coat hanger, that's the head of the lion, the mane of the lion. Regulus is the heart of the lion. And you see the body there and then the rear haunches. I sort of imagine a cat lying down on the ground so you don't really see the legs very well. And it's one of the few constellations in the spring that we can see without needing to use our imaginations too hard. The last two constellations that we're going to learn are somewhat obscure. One of them is hard to see and hard to find, but it's one you've heard of. And the other is one you probably haven't heard of, but actually is fairly easy to spot in the night sky. The first one, the one that you've heard of but probably have never seen, is the constellation Cancer, the crab. Now, Cancer is a sign of the zodiac, as is Virgo and as is Leo. So if we start down here at Virgo, and we just imagine drawing a line up through Leo and keep going, over here is Gemini. So this constellation in between is the constellation Cancer, the crab. And our term for the disease Cancer comes from the fact that a lot of tumors have a lot of uh, appendages that sort of make it look like a crab. And as you can see from our connect the dots here, this looks like a four-legged crab. The artwork, of course, can make it look like a normal crab, but uh, doesn't look much like one. Now in the center, in addition to these two stars, there's another star slightly offset that make a triangle. And in the middle of that triangle is a cluster of stars known as Praesepi, uh, also known as Messier 44 
or the beehive cluster. Praesepi is the Latin word for manger, so uh, some people here saw, and it got that name because Praesepi, the fuzz which represented the hay, was high in the sky around Christmas, so a lot of people imagine putting the baby Jesus in this manger on Christmas uh, night. It gets the name the beehive cluster because through a small telescope or just a pair of binoculars, you can see hundreds of stars in this small area, and it looks sort of like a swarm of bees around the middle of Cancer the Crab. And this is one of the few objects, one of the few star clusters you can see without a telescope. To your naked eye, it just looks like a patch of fuzz. So again, that's Messier 44, Praesepi, or the Beehive Cluster. Our final constellation we're going to look at is Corona Borealis. Corona Borealis means the northern crown. Corona means crown and Borealis northern. And it is over here to the left or to the east of Bootes. And you see here, here's our picture of the crown. If we get rid of the artwork, you actually see what looks like a bit of a diadem, you know, a half crown or a tiara with a really bright star in the middle and some fainter ones that arc around. And so that bright star is called Gemma, uh, G-E-M-M-A. And Gemma is Latin for the gem or the jewel. And if you imagine a tiara with a big jewel in the middle, uh, that's sort of what you have, a bright star marking the jewel and then the fainter stars marking the curve of the crown. So these are our five constellations that you need to know. Bootes, which contains the bright star Arcturus. Virgo, which contains the bright star Spica. Leo, which contains the bright star Regulus. And then we have the two faint constellations, Cancer, the crab, which is located between Leo and Gemini, and it's fairly faint. It contains the star cluster Messier 44, the beehive cluster, or Praesepi. Um, and again, just hard to see, hard to find. To the east of Bootes is the constellation Corona Borealis, not very well known, but if you go out in the sky, you can see it, an arc of stars with a bright one in the center. That is the northern crown or a diadem. So hopefully you now can locate all of the constellations for the spring. Of course, there are several more visible in the sky, but most of them are even more obscure and more faint and more difficult to pick out.